So hey guys, today I just thought we'd take a quick look at this 40 volt brush DC motor. And this come from a guy at work that um he's definitely well capable of fixing his own stuff, but he knew I worked on tools and wondered if I had a 40 volt DC motor because this one had went bad on him. So this came out of a Lynx a 40 volt pole saw. And I do have some uh, more like Ryobi 38 or 40 volt uh, motors heavy duty Johnson motor here, but it's not gonna fit his needs. I'll keep looking, but uh, meanwhile, I thought I'd at least mention as a video topic here, you see a lot of failures on DC motors, very similar to this. So if I bring over, let's just say 30 to 32 volts on a power supply. And sure enough, we're, we're getting nothing, no load whatsoever. And if we ohm it, we're showing zero load. And the key to this one is being a brush motor. So we see here on this pole, we see a brush, a carbon brush in there with a little spring. It's a copper colored spring retainer and tensioner on the on the brush that helps it run on the commutator of the armature. And if we look around on this side, I hope this shows up on video okay. But what's happened here is it's gotten hot and broke off and there's nothing left but a little bit of the spring and it probably ran for a little while arcing across until it just wore that spring down. So, so if you can see that, there's no brush left like it is on this one. And I've had that happen a lot with Ryobi tools and things. Just the cheaper brush motors are going to do that. So usually, I mean, it's pretty much a throwaway. But just wanted to mention that um, on troubleshooting these motors, that some of the issues you find, that's a common one. Even when your armature is not burnt up or not replaceable, the, some of the older tools, universal motors and, and things did have replaceable brushes. And a lot of days, these cheaper tools just do not. And of course, that's one good thing about brushless BLDC motors and controllers. They don't have that issue. They come with their own complicated issues, but at least you don't have this maintenance issue. So one thing we'll do is I'm going to go out to the garage and take a um, hammer and chisel and see if I can pop these indentions around the outer edge and perimeter of this motor housing that retains this brush disc, the end bail and the brush, ascent, brush holder assembly. And we'll just see if we can take it out and see if I can find one similar to it. Some of these are more difficult than others. It's a little bit harder to get a... Um, a straight on shot like like this would be better than some of these uh the way the shaft and bushing our bearing housing and sticking out of the end bell here but still got a good lick on it sometimes going across with some flush cutters we can work on that enough to hopefully pry it out i did drill these holes out just a tad bit bigger so i could get in here and pry i've already pried on this side Save a little time on camera here. I've worked with it for a few minutes. I will tap that back out flat before we go back. I have marked which side had black. That way they know the polarity. There's that issue as discussed. And unfortunately, they just don't make these really to be repairable kind of a shame really this whole ring even if you can get some of these parts they just they cost more than they than they should let's rock this back and forth just a little bit and there we go
a lot of times you do have these tabs. You gotta bend these tabs straight so you can push the, uh, the brush assembly out. I actually bent these like down instead of just crossways. See if this one will even work. I believe it might. So I have cleaned these sharp edges up with a file some. Tabs are a little bit different, but they still should bend and hold. There we go. Got to straighten out our end cap. We should be good to go. So we have to tapping that back in and securing that connection for the brush as smooth as it can be. I like it. Um, surprisingly smooth without even having to adjust the plate. I'm just going to file off these uh, sharp edges after I went back and secured the back plate back on. And then we'll, we'll be back on the bench and we'll test it out. So back now, I've already put the red wire where the white wire was on the other terminal i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and put him a new black wire on here as well because it's like he cut his wire off to bring me the motor so we'll go ahead and uh put a little rosin flux on here to help speed up the process and clean up the corrosion add a little bit of solder here to help it flow This side looks fairly good. Open this hole up just a little bit more. Man. 
some more rising flux on there. one point two ohms so we should have a low ohms load let's see if a, a 32 volt five amp supply run it up pretty good it might current limit out for a minute but let's see what do they do here about one 1.2 amps I think gets to running so that's pretty good spins free so hopefully he'll be able to get a pretty handy pole saw back working again and I mean yes yeah, sometimes a cheap motor isn't worth going through this trouble but I figure I'd post it because I've done something like this many many times and been successful with it but it is a shame to throw away a good handy tool just because a brush breaks off and is it worth the hour hour and a half of time to do something like that well maybe maybe not depends on your case but in this case i mean to get a decent pole saw with nothing else wrong with it back going i hope the guy will be happy about it as long as i have time i'm glad to do it so i hope you found this video at least informational if not helpful and if you did please consider liking subscribing now i'll have a link below the video description of a lot of tools interesting items that I use on my bench and um, things I find helpful and just know that those are affiliate links and any link you click on helps me tremendously support the channel so thanks for your support thanks for watching and God bless